When I was a child, when I, when I thought I was experiencing that wasn't normal, I was like, what if everyone else is seeing this? What if, what if I'm not the only one seeing this? Because I thought, I thought, well, why, why would I be seeing all this stuff and no one else is seeing it, so they, they've got to see it. But I never opened my mouth, which I should have, but I never told my mom, dad, or friends or anything until later in life that I had the illness for a while. And why didn't you tell I didn't say it because I didn't want to be sent to the hospital. And I, I didn't want to be sent to like a, a group therapy session or anything like that. So I just kind of kept it to myself and just didn't tell anyone until later in life. When they seriously escalated, I was seeing goblins, gremlins, creatures, ghouls, um, ghosts, demons. And so I, I dealt with that for about a year. And then when I was around 19 is when I broke to my parents. And the first thing I said to him was I was seeing shadow people. I'd wake up in the middle of the night and there'd be shadow people all around my bed. And I'd just sit there in fear. I was like, whoa, what, what's going on? So finally I told my mom, like, mom, I'm seeing shadow people at night. And this was before it really, really got bad. I mean, I was just seeing the shadow people in a few spots here and there. And um, it wasn't until around 20 where it got really bad. Like, I was already seeing all the creatures and stuff, and then it got bad where I was seeing them everywhere. I think what's helped me the most in my recovery is um, a support group, which is my friends, you know, my parents, and the medicine, definitely the medicine. And um, I'm on five different medicines. Uh, one's for anti-depression, one's for anti-anxiety, two mood stabilizers, two antipsychotics, and I alternate between three different sleeping medicines to help me sleep or else I wouldn't be able to sleep. I, mean, I, I haven't gotten used to them. It's not like a habit for me. It's just I just can't sleep unless I take the medicine. And I, mean, I can't survive living on two hours of sleep. I probably could for about a week. Then I, after that, then the depression would absolutely drop. And that's just part of the bipolar. I mean, you're manic, then you drop. You're manic, you drop. Or you're just kind of in mixed stages. It's like, like a wave. This working out helps me a lot too, because I can come in here and push all the weights. And um, it takes away my mania, because I can put my mania to good use and work out as hard as I can, for as long as I can. And that kind of brings down the psychotic episodes too. It just helps, helps to deal with day-to-day -day living. And I, I used to be 340 pounds when I first started all these medicines because they're like, they're weight gainers. And I'd wake up in the middle of the night and just eat and drink soda and everything like that. And um, finally, I came in here and that's, I lost 100 pounds. And um, this is my sanctuary. I mean, this is what I look forward to every day is working out with my dad. My um, hopes and aspirations would be to become a psychiatrist because I live with the disease. And I think it's kind of unfair when some psychiatrists are like, well, you can get out and do this and that. It's not that easy, having the illness. I mean, you can't just say, uh, you just can't get up one day and say, I'm going to go to the mall today. I mean, you got, with me at least, I need to plan stuff out weeks, of, weeks ahead. And that makes me feel comfortable. So I just um, plan things ahead. And I'm trying, I, I'm a CNA now. So I'm kind of working my way up into the medical field, and I would really love to become a psychiatrist. And it would be easier because I could say, when they say, you don't understand what I'm going through, I'll say, yes, I do. I, I know exactly what you're going through. And I'd be able to give them the medicine that I think that worked the best for me. And just start out on that and just do my best to help people as much as I can. And just say they have a voice. And n nothing can change that. Just live out your dreams. Even though you have this illness, you can still live out your dreams.